folks and welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. You are here with Ben and Lauren on Monday. Yes. It's Monday. I've got in the, uh, the habit of highlighting the fact that it's Monday. I've just got back from leave. Yeah, you've got back from leave. You had a bit longer of leave than me. After an uh, event that we're here to talk about today. ACOF. ACOF, Camp Oven Festival. Yes, so you would have already seen, uh, actually before we get into it, don't forget yeah, to subscribe to the wherever you're listening the to boring bits. the podcast, YouTube, um, iTunes, Spotify, whatever. And um, also yes. don't forget the Facebook yes. group, Snowy's Camping Show. You can jump on there and... Ask questions, answer questions. Give us ideas, whatever you want. Yep. It's there. The group's there for you guys. So ACOF, the Australian Camp Oven Festival. Correct. In Milmerin, so Queensland. We've, I'm just finally really integrating back to work today, but you're properly back to work properly today because you've been on leave. So what you do you had mean? You've been back for a week, time. haven't you? Yeah, but not emotionally and mentally. Uh, what makes you think, do I look like I'm emotionally and mentally in not a, here yet. <laughs> in an organised place, oh, do I? Because I'm not. I've no, still got a lot of emails. I was, looking, I was looking at you over at your desk today going, ooh, Benji. Yeah, I've been staring at my screen too long. I haven't been for a walk today. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the ride home. But, but so, um, yeah, we've done the last couple of episodes have been ACOF because obviously we talked about Cam and his competition, which was awesome, and people loved it. Yeah. We loved it. Yeah, so we are the we were uh, this is the first time we've done it. Mm-hmm. Snowies was a, a naming um, partner, sponsor, for the, a sponsor mm-hmm. for the event yep. this year, and a group of us uh, travelled up to Milmerin, mm-hmm. um, had a stall there, some across from our Brandau store, and some up from Adelaide. That's right, yeah, mm. uh, and we spent the weekend in the Milmerin showgrounds with all. The camp oven thousands of other people yeah. there. Yeah. Which yeah. so first impressions, right? Because I don't know about you, because you obviously dro- you were on leave on the coast already, so you drove across from Brisbane, and I drove up with my partner. Yep, from Adelaide, carrying a whole plethora of gear. Which <laughs> all the was stuff fun. we didn't want to ship. There. You <laughs> yeah. got stuffed in all your sprinter like, van. Yeah, all the tech gear and stuff that you're like, nah, do we trust this with a logistics company? No, we don't. Um, anyway. Trust it with you instead. Trust it with me <laughs> instead. Me. Um, when we approached yeah. the showground, we were just like. This is big. What in the sweet love and heck is this? It was yeah. in insanely massive. And bearing in mind the festival didn't start until Saturday, mm. but this was Friday lunchtime and. It looked like it was already underway. Yeah, it was heaving. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen as many caravans, camper trailers, motorhomes, camp like ever in my life in one spot mm. as, as like this. It was insane. In my mind, I expected to pull up and see a lot of trucks and vans and semi-erected um, gazebos and displays and people yeah. working away getting ready for Saturday, but it was largely set up and. People were already walking around just looking at things and enjoying yeah. a drink. And and the, uh, just the sheer volume of people was an absolute of people. shock to me. Yeah. Absolute so shock. If you, I mean, it, it's de- definitely worth the visit if you're ever interested in going to an event like that because yeah. it's, it's a great atmosphere. Yeah. Heaps of people. So um, it's held every two years. Um, obviously Milmer in Queensland. We've talked about that a few times, but if you're not familiar with where it is, it's around about an hour and a bit um, west or a little bit southwest of Toowoomba. Yeah, it took me about three and hours to drive from the Gold Coast. Yeah. So almost directly inland. So um, and it's October long weekend, which is in Queensland, <laughs> the Queen or King, I don't know what we're saying now, is birthday long weekend, but for most of the rest of the country it's the Labor Day weekend, I'm pretty sure. And it happens every two years, not every year. Well, this one was each year because they got the COVID happened and they had an extra one and they're oh, back, yeah. on, so their, COVID happened. So back la- on their even yeah, year the, the 2020 one was held last year and so this is 2022. But essentially I was talking to the organisers and they were saying they do it every two years because the world of camp ovens and historical traditional Australian bush entertainment, et cetera, et cetera, Moves quite slow. <laughs> so in the sense that it's not like there's every single year if you have an event, it's not like there's heaps of fresh, new, cool stuff you can have on offer. 
Yeah. Does that make sense? Some of that bush poetry was pretty, <laughs> I don't think you'd want to hear all that every some year. Some of that was bush poetry was questionable, some of it, but hey, it got a good laugh. Historic. <laughs> historic Histo- yeah. historic Very, attitudes towards bush poetry. Historically traditional. <laughs> um, yeah, social yep. social expectations. Anyway. Good for a laugh. Good for a laugh. Yeah. As long as you're not too precious. <laughs> but so therefore they have it every two years. Mm. So it's still sort of fresh. People still want to come. It's not flogging a dead horse sort of thing, which yep. I thought was pretty good. Good idea. And yeah. it's pretty much entirely put on by volunteers mm. in Mill Marin and the and the community, yep. which also is insane to me given the sheer magnitude of of the size of the festival. I personally have been in my life involved in volunteering for festivals of, of some kind, but I don't think I've ever um, volunteered at a festival where there wasn't a significant, like a significant team of full-time paid staff mm. for the whole year that run that. And the fest, and ACOF, as in the festival we just went to, in terms of size and infrastructure and all that sort of jazz has is on par with some that I've volunteered at before. So the fact that it was done by volunteers is insane to me. There's a, to give you an idea of the scale, there's like an entire stage, like a full stage seating for the stage. There's large camp kitchens. There's stools all over the place. They've got a whole judging tent for the camp cooking competition and judges that are there as well. Mm. A couple like of the, different the entire, sort of paddock sections of stalls too, not just like yeah. one. A massive food, um, food cart alleyway thing, a huge canteen. Coffee vans, cakes. Yep, they've got a huge um, like craft and art section with had mm-hmm. a blacksmith kids, there and like section. vintage gear and um, the whole leather workers and like, yeah, the whole showground is absolutely. Yeah, whole showground is absolutely shockers. Very impressive for the it's small, what seemed like a small team yeah, to put it together. Yeah, totally. But on the Friday night, we sort of arrived and we ended up setting up our Snowy's stall, yeah, which well the, we were going to have Brenda, there. Our Brenda team were already there and they had all our gazebos and, and, and most of it sort of set up. So just getting that started. Um, yeah. But people were there on the Friday afternoon already coming in and shopping and wanting to yeah. know. And we were totally caught off guard, weren't we? Because we didn't think it really started until the Saturday. So it was so cool still. that everyone was so excited to sort of be there and getting involved and, yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was good. And then we headed into town and we did bowls. We did. I've never done bowls before. Lawn, but lawn we thought bowls. We'll, we'll jump in on that. What, what You organised it. What's it called? It was, called, a, it was called Jackpot Pears. Jackpot Pears. Um, so we went there and I didn't catch the fellow's name, but they <laughs> showed us how to play. It was fun, wasn't and it? you were quite vocal in asking questions if you weren't sure. Yeah, I sure was. <laughs> I was into it. I took it a bit more seriously than I should have taken it. And oh, a little bit. <laughs> Gee, I really didn't realise how competitive Lauren was until she started losing at lawn bowls <laughs> and then competitive Lauren came out. And, well, uh, you and I, I were on we opposing get, teams. We were, yeah. And, yeah, Benji was with our producer, Kieran, who turns out to be a snake in the grass in the world of lawn bowls. He's like, I've never done this before. And then next minute he's like smoking us all. Wasn't me. No, Kieran. No, it was all Kieran, was it? I didn't do any good at all. No, you did a little bit. Yeah, right. Actually, you know what? Towards the end, you actually were quite good. I warmed like up. you sort of warmed up. Probably because I saw you getting fired up and I thought I'm going to try <laughs> get harder now and see how far I this goes. I was so mad. <laughs> I actually felt like hurling a lawn bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. So there, that was, there fun. was six of us that went there and, and yeah. played bowls. It was a bit of fun, the, the local community there, and had a few drinks. And then we headed to the pub for yep. a meal. Meal Marin, Marin. The ta- I think it was called the, the Meal Tavern. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was good. pretty good. So good team team event. Team Just event. Had a bit of a chat and then crashed back mm. at the campsite ready for a big mass- event. Saturday was a massive day. It was. It wasn't even a full day, was it? <laughs> Hey? It wasn't even a full day. What do you mean? Oh, as in we weren't yeah. working for a full day? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, obviously, it was a full day time wise, but it wasn't even a full day in terms of it got cut short. But anyway, we because had to get up at like Sparrow's quarter to s- half past five or some ludicrous because of Cam's, hour. Cam's briefing into his to, cooking yeah, competition. To, to, for this co- cooking competition briefing. That we – and if you've listened to the the cooking competition podcast with Cam, you would know that Benji and I basically did nothing 
because Cam didn't want us anywhere near his food or ruining it or well, any of that sort of jazz. But even though he didn't want us to help realistically because we're just getting in the way, we still had to be up at 5.30 <laughs> to, to attend in. this freaking meeting. You rolled out of bed and said team members. very grumpy after losing lawn bowls the <laughs> night before. I just rolled back into bed afterwards. But we all attended because if you haven't watched that episode, obviously Cam <clears> – <throat> There's all these big teams and yeah. we just threw Cam in the deep end and then sure put our did. hands up to help him, but he didn't. Yeah, we didn't need to because mm. all I did was wash some dishes. Yeah. And I organised his mess a bit, but anyway. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so our, the Snowy store was so great to have at the festival. We had a couple of big gazebos and the big signs and it was so great. We met heaps and heaps of people, mostly Queenslanders, um, but people from all over the place. It was good to sort of chat and catch up with some people and sort of talk about the festival and obviously because we'd never been there before and lots and lots of people who were attending have been there loads of times and absolutely love it. Dave from um – his Dave's a manager at our Brendel store and a few of his team members set it all up and I think there was – because we're sort of north of Brisbane, mm. our store up there, and he, he said there's a lot of new people that didn't know of us before. So yeah. it was really good to connect with some uh, some new people. We do have to give a shout-out to uh, uh, the only <laughs> fan photo that we had at the event. We rolled our, up with our, our – I would like <laughs> to say it's our first official yeah. selfie that yeah, we people have up, asked for. We turned up with all the bling and Mark's really gay and just didn't get a response. <laughs> It's okay, Benji. We expected we no, but, but then, for real. But then Rachel. From Don't the, fall off your bike, Rachel, because I know you listen to us when you're riding. When she rides her bike. So I shout out to Rachel. The Camper um, Trailer High with Sundays. Just, yeah. We just wanted to give her a shout out. I think they say, came down from Early Beach or somewhere up that direction down yeah. to the festival. Um, so it was really good to see. You've so far to got meet that, you, the, Rachel. the only fan photo that we've ever had taken. Correct. So. That might be <laughs> worth a lot of money one day. <laughs> You never know. But, yeah, like Fingers Benji crossed. said, um, Rachel and her husband have a camp trailer hire business. So it's camp trailer hire or With camp Sundays. camp trailer hire maybe. Camp I'll trailer. triple check that. We'll put We're it in the show notes. Um, witsundays.com.au. So she so, drove for like six hours. Yeah, 1,200 kilometres or something. I like to think it was just to see us, but I think there's probably a bit more to it than that. Maybe. <clears> you never know. Anyway, we'll stop gloating about us. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. That was really fun though. So we saw her on the stool anyway and it yep. was buzzing. There's heaps of people buying. We had camp ovens and like, oh, camp oven cooking gear there and mm-hmm. bags and we sold heaps of gear. We didn't know what to expect. and We honestly didn't know what to expect. Yeah. yeah. So um, next year we'll go better prepared. Next time. We, we learned yep. a bit from that one. But um, I would just want to say Saturday, uh, Saturday during the day we come up from Adelaide or we came up from Adelaide and the weather that we'd had in Adelaide ha- was mostly miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get up there and it's cracking, clear, beautiful. sunny, beautiful Queensland warm. day, yep. warm, humid. We are so not acclimatised. So middle of the day, we're like, oh, we'll just sit under the shade and have a bit of food and just wait until this heat passes. Because we wanted to do some podcast episodes and some product reviews, but it was sort of get out and about really hot in the middle of the day. Yeah, and someone was like, oh, there'll be a cool change coming. So we're like, cool, we'll just um, have our chat with Cam, which, as if you've watched it, you know, was pretty hot, and then we'll just chill out for a bit. And in an hour or two, the cool change will come and we'll be up and we'll be able to smash out all of the, our other stuff. We complained about this hot weather, but Cam was slaving <laughs> over the fire with his Cam ovens That's by true. himself. Still didn't ask for help though, did he? He didn't, no. <laughs> and we did offer it multiple times. Multiple times, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, of course, someone comes around and is like, you need to tie down all your stuff. There's a storm coming. Yeah. I had a and- I had this big conversation with Dave from the Brenda team because we always say if you're using a gazebo, yeah. put your guy ropes out. Yeah. And Dave's got all the gazebos set up, hex um hex screwed to the ground. Yeah. But no guy ropes. Yeah. And I said to Dave, Dave, if they blow away, <laughs> We're gonna- there's Egg on the face of Lauren and I. <laughs> yeah, because, for sure. Because you haven't used guy ropes. People, and where he, are your guy ropes? He gave me stick all weekend going, they haven't blown away, Ben, they haven't blown away. Yeah, that is true. But then we got word that afternoon. Yeah, that there was a massive storm coming and it came, didn't it? It did. I think your partner Just, put guy ropes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guy ropes were put out because obviously, you know, Dave had his um, – 
I think it's Falcon 270, 230 Falcon whole, 270 awning yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 230 helped us out with a heap of gear, yeah. swags and And, and all so that gear. Dave had his out and I had the Super Peg awning, which yep. I didn't have poles. I didn't have the extreme weather kit or whatever. I just put some straps down. And then we had all the 230 swags that you guys were sleeping in, which I felt so sorry for because you didn't have gazebos or anything over you. You just had these swags you know, out, in the, but dry <laughs> out as, in the middle of nowhere. Dry but they were dry I as. Was, I was dry inside. I woke up, like, we'll, we'll get into this a bit more detail, but there yeah. was so much rain that we were walking around in an inch of water over what seemed like the entire showground. Yeah. But I woke up in the middle of the night to check something and I opened, just opened the door a little bit on my swag and there was just like an inch of water outside my swag. So I'm sitting in. You're literally floating. Yeah, would have floated in your away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But dry, stay dry. But we did inside. think the storm came, and we thought, oh, you know, it will pass, or at least we thought, come sort of late afternoon, early evening, it'll pass. But it just didn't. It got heavier and heavier and heavier, mm-hmm. and then we were, me and my partner were up, sort of trying to re-anchor these tarps and tie yeah. ropes around it and because it wasn't just rain, it was wind and it was Heavy hectic. Rain. It yeah. was hectic. And then you were like 11 o'clock at night, you were up trying to protect this dock well, the, and all the, it was the just crazy. And, yeah, was, and I don't know if there was hail at some point, but I've never ha- heard noise like it and it was insane. Yeah. And then we wake up the next morning and it's still raining and it's just the whole place is just flooded. Because I think they've had a bit of rain up there already, so the ground was already wet. So this is just the, the sitting it was on top literally of the ground. It was mud. There's cars getting mud bogged. and yeah, people getting bogged and just lakes of water everywhere. And then you know the the um, volunteers were getting out their tractors and trying to put mulch down so people weren't sinking. And well, hats off I to was, the organisers there because they had, had a massive totally, pile they were, of they pine were, bark. Seemed to be I relatively thought, prepared. What do they need that for? And yeah. that was gone by the end of it. The tractor was pulling vans out in the back paddock as well because yeah. they were all getting bogged. All getting bogged. Yeah. And I think um, a large portion of Sunday I was more than ankle deep in water just yep. traipsing through the snowy site and on the stalls. and It was sodden. Trying to organise the stock and, yeah, it was insane. And that threw a spanner in the works for Cam too because he had – an awesome roast pork, bread, all of this stuff sitting on the camp he had oven. A, he was doing I some reckon, turducken dish as well, like oh yeah, all gave, of this they, stuff. They pulled the plate, uh, pulled the pin on a few things because yeah. it was just too wet, and the managing the heat and the fire was getting hard. But I reckon he was ninety five percent of the way through. And he, in his, you tried his food, right? Yeah, like gingerbreads, so good. Starts, oh my gosh, amazing! And he got some firsts and seconds. He did really well. So yeah. he's on a high, goes into making his main course, I reckon 95% of the way there. So he's literally just crisping the skin on the pork and browning the top of the bread and this rain came. Yeah, and, and it just the sucked temp- the heat out yeah. of everything, didn't it? So his stuff was – I tasted it and it tasted, tasted awesome. Tasted good, but you could just tell it just wasn't cooked. 5%. Yeah, and it he wasn't was cooked. A, he was a bit gutted. To that 5%, he yeah. He was a bit gutted. But I think other teams that were – a bit more prepared, you know, the four person teams, whatever, they had these huge, big tin wind breaks and yep. sh- shelters and stuff. So all their fire and coals were mostly protected from the wind. Yep. But I'm pretty sure that Cam's fire was in a, surrounded by a puddle ultimately. Every, yeah. Everything was just everything wet. Was everything wet. was wet. It was cold, freezing cold, miserable, soggy. But everyone was still out and about, yeah. getting amongst it, having Did a you good see, time. Um, Cam's judging when the judges come around. So we had we messed up and we gave him a two point four meter gazebo, which it was supposed to be a bigger one. Yeah. So he didn't have much room to work under. But then when it rains, uh, the judges who stood under there with him, mm. actually I think he stepped out, so he's drenched. Yeah. And there's a few of us standing outside with umbrellas trying to stay dry. And there's about I think it was four judges huddled <laughs> under this two point four meter gazebo <laughs> with cams that had like table two and massive the tables and the in chairs, it. Yeah. All trying all the food. So that would have been hilarious. Quite a funny scene. So next time. Yeah. Like a bigger gazebo. Yes. I'm trying to work out where I was fun. then. I think that was when we were trying to somehow repatriate We'd, all the store and move yeah, the tables yeah, and get all the stock and all can. of that stuff out. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. But, yeah, those swags, those 230 swags held up amazing. Dry as, yeah. They were so dry and people ended up coming back at the end of the day because, you know, we sold them as, as the demos yep. and were oh, chewing them up. They're a bit muddy. A bit muddy, <laughs> but it didn't weekend. matter, did it? So, yeah, so, Sunday morning was a pretty wet day. Mm. Um, tried to sell as much stock as we could. 
a lot mm-hmm. of it got wet, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. we got through a heap of it. Some people grabbed some bargains because yeah. we couldn't take back soggy boxes. Yeah. Um, all good fun. <laughs> yeah, but the food, the like the the camp oven catering, um, where they had the massive big like 140 liter camp ovens, 140 and stuff, kilos. Those camp or, ovens. I don't yeah, know how many doing was, like curries like, and all of that sort of jazz. Yeah. They were still cranking along on the Sunday, and yeah. everyone was still sort of out doing their bits and pieces, and I think damper throwing competition and yeah. all sorts of stuff. So it was a pretty good weekend. Yeah, lots of kids just dancing and all playing around in in what were just. Flat ground before is now a river. Yeah, the kids have just got wet gear on, and the parents are shaking their heads, going, Didn't "Expect that?" No, <laughs> kids that's are true. saturated through now. But even like that walkway where the food was, there was a big patch in the middle that was just a lake, and they filled it with um, the pine bark. And then and it the rained pine more. Bark was just floating on top <laughs> of the water. <laughs> so it was just yeah, a pine bark. I, I actually lake. walked along that path and didn't register that the pine bark in the middle was just floating oh, and you just went was right like through. straight yeah, in. It was a deep one. Yeah. But yeah, it was great. I think it sort of wound up a bit sooner than it potentially would have if the weather was good. Like I think most people were clearing out Sunday afternoon. Mm. But from what I understand, a lot of people arrive, say, from the Wednesday beforehand and head out the, you know, Wednesday after or Tuesday, Wednesday after because obviously the showgrounds does double up as a bit of a campground as well Mm. and there's no requirement for you to sort of leave or whatever. So you can make a big week of it. Um, Well, I left – Monday morning, so yeah. I stayed Sunday night and left on the Monday morning after yeah. we packed up. And there's still heaps of people camped there on the Monday morning. Yeah. So you can make a big weekend of it. So, yeah, you and definitely can. And I think it's probably worth the trip. And, I mean, not just saying it because we sponsored it, but I was really impressed. It's it's a really so well-organised event. It's a well-organised event. There's loads of stuff on if it's something that sort of is is feasible from a distance perspective for you mm. to attend, Yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth it, especially because it happens sort of every two years. Mm. You know, you can put your pennies aside, you can make a plan, um, lots of good stuff in the re- in that sort of region Heaps of Queensland as well. as well. If you want to learn about camp oven cooking, like King mm-hmm. Brown who we interviewed did, it, yep. did some shows there on, on how to cook in a camp oven. Yeah. I reckon if you grabbed anyone who's, who's just cooking and asking questions, there's no – no one's there to, to sort of retain the information to themselves. It's totally. this kind of sharing kind like of even scenario. Even all the teams so cooking in the competition, they were sharing out. heaps of info. Yeah. There were people doing demonstrations with heat beads as well, like versus yep. coals and cooking with heat beads and different sorts of ovens. Yeah, it was it was uh, w- well worth it, I think. And the Millmere in town, it seems like a really good community. Yeah. So great. Yes, they've got – I didn't have a good look, but it looked like they were little – cafes and coffee shops and a nice supermarket there and yeah so certainly worth a, a visit I for reckon, sure the i agree festival i look forward to hopefully us going again yeah 2024 was a good event that would be good yep all right thanks for listening to our 2022 acoff wrap up up yeah if you have That's any cool. questions about the festival or if you've been before or if or you were there, if you were there let us know let give us know. a shout share some photos cool yeah catch you later thanks guys see you later